Hello and welcome to this Uni Taster on demand event today. My name is John Sheik, the founder of Uni Tasters, and I'm delighted to be hosting this event. Today we're going to be looking at disaster and emergency management, and I'm delighted to be joined by Leanne Hunt, a course director at Coventry University. With these events, we try to cover why you might want to be interested, why you might be interested in studying that course, what to expect on it, application tips and careers. But I'm very conscious you tuned in to hear from our speaker, not for myself. So with that, I'll introduce please Leanne Hunt, joining us from Coventry University. Over to you, Leanne. Um, so as John said, um, the course that I look after at Coventry is Disaster and Emergency Management. Um, so I'm going to talk you through um, some of the stuff um, that we do on our course. Um, and obviously you would um, you would come across elsewhere if you were looking at this. Uh, so why do this course? Um, we're living through a pandemic at the moment. Have you ever watched the news and thought, uh, why is it being done like this? How could it be done better? I think I've got an idea what would work. Um, or have you noticed all the other disasters that are going on at the same time? So we've had volcanic eruptions in the Philippines. We've had earthquakes in Turkey and Haiti. We've had wildfires in uh, California, in Europe. Um, so all these other kind of disasters have still been going on in the background. And COVID aside, disasters are on the increase globally. Uh, floods alone, for example, in the last 20 years have doubled uh, in numbers and um, with the increase in climate change and global warming, we're likely to see more of these disasters, extreme uh, natural hazard events um, and, you know, couple all that with globalisation, increasing populations. Um, we've got a real mixture there um, and potential for lots more uh, disasters. Um, so, our course uh, and others like it are designed to equip the next generation, you guys, the next generation of disaster managers, emergency planners, with some of the skills and the knowledge that you would need to go out there um, and help governments, uh, the communities, different health and education organisations, for example, um, respond to, plan for, recover from, a whole range of different disasters. And now increasingly, we're trying to do this in a much more sustainable, forward thinking kind of way. Um, so resilience and sustainability are some really key concepts um, that link very much into this subject um, and are embedded for us in particular um, throughout our courses. Um, so why would you do a course like this? Um, you are invariably trained by um, a number of uh, academic staff who have worked in industry themselves, um, that have a lot of experience working in disaster response or disaster recovery, perhaps have worked for humanitarian agencies. Um, and uh, many particular at our university, um, many of us are still very active either in research and or commercial activities where we're working with responding organisations to support them in creating plans or uh, doing reviews, et cetera. Uh, and we also support them with their training and exercising. Um, you will find um, that a lot of people that then um, sort of work in the area of disaster and emergency management have done a course around disaster and emergency management. It's quite a niche area, um, but everything that you therefore get taught on these courses um, is very much applicable to what you would have to do out there sort of in the world of uh, work. Um, so this is just an example of the kinds of things um, that uh, our course offers. Um, that um, you know you will find perhaps similar things um, on other courses as well. Um, but at Coventry, we take a very mixed methods approach to how we teach. So it's not just all about sitting in a lecture theatre. We try and make sessions very interactive. Uh, we put you through little exercises, um, whether that's in our simulation centre, which I'll come on to, um, or whether it's what we call tabletop exercises. Um, even your coursework, so there's a mixture of individual and uh, group courseworks. Um, and what we, the approach we sort of take is um, starting with some of the basics, if you like. Um, so what makes a, an, what is a natural hazard, such as an earthquake or a flood, what makes that a disaster? Um, 
So I often say to the students, you know, if the earthquake or the tsunami strikes and there's no one around, there's no, you know, no buildings to damage, there's no people to injure or kill, um, is it really a disaster? And the answer is no, it's a natural event. It's us that make it a disaster. Um, it's our risk, um, our exposure, our vulnerability that makes these natural hazards a disaster. Um, and so those are the kind of concepts that we start to introduce. What is vulnerability? You know, what makes someone vulnerable? But they're things that we then build on um, throughout the course and we expand out on, we delve into in more detail, incorporating um, other, other sort of elements. Um, we don't just look at it in terms of um, communities. We look at it in terms of businesses, organisations. Um, how can they become more resilient? How can they prepare themselves for a range of different risks that they might face? Um, and we start to think then as well about, OK, so if we can't move ourselves away from a hazard, uh, whether that's a natural hazard or, you know, think of something like a, you know, a nuclear plant or something, a train accident. If we can't move ourselves away from that, how do we help people become more prepared? Um, how do we increase their knowledge, their risk perception, um, and then therefore their preparedness? What can they do? Um, and then if we've done all of that and unfortunately the hazard still strikes and it turns into an emergency or disaster, how do we work with communities, with businesses, organisations to support them in response and then their own recovery? Looking at things like um, reconstruction, uh, providing aid, so we look at the humanitarian sector as well and their importance in this. And what's really important is that when we're considering disasters and emergencies, we don't just think about this from a UK perspective or just a USA perspective. Um, so we look at this from a range of examples and countries um, across the globe. And one of the things we like to do is bring in a variety of guest speakers. Um, so you're not just listening to us telling you uh, you know, various things that, um, you know, that we know, that we've researched, uh, that we've done in the past. Um, you're hearing from industry experts that are out there doing this at the moment. Um, so we've had guest speakers from Italy, um, we've had them from America, um, and we've had them from different organisations within the UK um, and other uh, wider humanitarian um, organisations as well. Um, so I think field trips are something that everybody looks forward to um, on a degree um, and we are no exception at Coventry we also do field trips um, in the first year in particular we stay in this country and uh, the images you can see there are, are based on uh, some activities that our students do at a place called outreach it's all around team building um, getting to know each other really well um, so you bond as a group um, and sort of learning some of those um, key teamwork and communication skills, which are so, so important in the world of disaster and emergency management. In your second and third years, um, for us, we go international um, to um, a potentially a range of different locations. Uh, we've been to Italy, we've been to Turkey, um, and there's the potential in future years for us to look at other locations um, as well. Um, another thing that's um, incredibly important, I think, um, is getting some experience. So whether you do that through summer internships um, or whether you get the opportunity to do something like a placement year, which is something we offer, um, that's incredibly important. Um, I don't think you can put a price tag um, on the value of doing a placement year. Um, these are working with existing organizations that are doing disaster management and emergency planning um, and they take students on sometimes on a paid basis um, and you get real hands-on experience it's not making the tea and doing the photocopying it's really getting involved with the nitty-gritty of emergency planning and disaster management um, and you can do them uh, here in the UK or you can do them abroad um, you're supported by academic and other university staff um, and it's just I really can't stress, you know, how valuable um, I think that is. Um, and it's something that we found for our students significantly boosts their employment um, as they come out of university. Um, I think another thing that um, you will find as well is you'll get a lot of um, extracurricular um, opportunities for learning. 
Um, so whether it's virtual teaching placements, partnership working with other universities. Um, we're quite a niche course, really, disaster and emergency management. Um, it's quite a niche subject and it's not particularly well known, um, certainly across sort of um, younger age groups. So it's really important um, to start building those relationships quite early on um, and working in partnership with other universities to run different training programs and hear from other students about what they've learned and perhaps hearing about sort of the local context for how disasters are dealt with in their particular country is really invaluable and making those connections early on is brilliant um, especially for then when you again you get out in the in the world of, of work. Um, so where might this course take you or, you know, a another um, thinking about disaster and emergency management? Where can you go with this? Um, so it's not just about going into emergency services. Um, you may do and many do. Um, local authorities have an emergency planning responsibility, both here and abroad. Uh, so local government, you may go into regional or national government looking at different elements of disaster and emergency management. Um, you may go and work for different humanitarian organisations um, and sort of link to that different charities um, and organisations such as, such as the United Nations, um, who are the driving force behind a lot of um, the guidance and a lot of the international, especially, um, responses that we see. So you may wish to go and work for those organisations. Perhaps less well known is that you could end up in the banking or insurance industry. Um, so thinking about risk management, business continuity, crisis management, all things that are covered as part of disaster and emergency management, but link a bit more to the business and the economic side of things. And that's also where we in particular have seen some of our students go. The utility and transport sector is also another one. Um, they will all have manage disaster and emergency management plans in place, business continuity plans. So they are another area where you might go into. The world is huge when it comes to disaster and emergency management, and there are hundreds and thousands of jobs both here and abroad um, that you may wish to go into. And as we come out of something, hopefully start to come out of something like COVID, um, and unfortunately we do keep seeing um, the increase in disasters and you know, wait to see what further impacts of climate change we're going to see. There's going to be more and more need for disaster and emergency managers um, to be out there supporting the communities, uh, government, different responding or organisations um, in helping people respond to and recover from this. Um, and also, you know, having to do this increasingly, um, so in a more sustainable way. Um, so linking everything we do back to sustainability, the sustainable development goals, et cetera, um, are some of the challenges going forward. Um, so thank you for listening. If you're interested in our course at Coventry, um, do drop me an email or, um, or have a look on the website. Um, thank you very much.